the blades come out. This is your look at the new McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat Baraka Tarkatan Beefcake. Baraka belongs to a race of nomadic mutants called Tarkatan, later revealed in Mortal Kombat Deception to be a crossbreed between Nether Realm demons and denizens of the wasteland of Outworld. His most distinctive characteristic, like most other members of his race, is a pair of long retractable blades that extend from his forearms. Before we get this review underway of Baraka, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. I'd like to also send out a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys who provided the sample of Baraka that we're having a look at in this review. Baraka stands at 7.8 inches in height, so he's getting pretty close to being an 8 inch tall figure. And how does that translate to centimeters? Let me go ahead and provide that for you right now. The figure stands 20 centimeters exactly. He doesn't come with much in the way of accessories. One thing I wish that the Mortal Kombat figures could have, sharing something to what the DC Multiverse has been doing, is give trading cards with all of their figure releases. Just enough that there's artwork on the front of the card and on the back some simple stats about the fighter himself. One thing it does have, though, as a similarity to the DC Multiverse line, is the display stand. This is the one, of course, that comes included with Baraka. This is the one that comes included with the DC Multiverse figure line. They are identical, short for the fact that, of course, DC is down below on one of them, and, of course, Mortal Kombat is down below on the other. The peg placement is also identical to the same, obviously, it's the same on both sides. So, again, they're just reuses of the same stands that we've gotten. But love to see the idea of maybe getting trading cards with future releases. The other accessory that comes included with Baraka, a pair of these, if you will, he comes, of course, with his retractable blades. Now, these don't so much retract as they plug in place. I'll show you how they work in a second. But I just want to show you the detailing done to the actual blades themselves. While they don't, unfortunately, have any paint to speak of, the texturing on them is actually really good. You could imagine that as this sticks inside of flesh, all these little spikes that stick up on the surface of the blades would probably catch onto the flesh and then rip it further as the blades are pulled out. I will admit that I have killed many opponents at the hands of Baraka's blades. Love these. Now again, with these, the idea is that they attach in place. So what they've done is they put like little slots on the side of Baraka's arms. I mean, without the blades, yes, you do notice there's a slot there on the side of his arm. Most people probably will be more inclined to display him with the blades. So all you basically do is you just fit the into the peg, just the peg slot area here, and then you just press it down, just like that. If you press it far enough down, you'll get a nice leveled terrain to the rest of his arms. And you can do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm actually glad that they did give you the option to have these removed if you wanted to. Again, I feel most people will probably go the route of having Baraka with blades in hand. But again, I like the options available where you can actually take those off if you wanted to. I must admit, yes, that does look pretty cool to have the blades on Baraka's forearms. In addition to that, we're just going to put the figure down for one second. He does also come include with a brain. I don't know specifically whose brain this is, but I can tell you it's probably left the person's body already. Hey, hello there. There's also a hole running through the front that leads all the way to the back. Now, of course, that's going to play a big role when it comes to Baraka's blades. You sort of probably already know where this is going to go. You can take it and choose which blade you want to do it to. Just slide the, bl the blade. Ouch, 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 ouch. And you have that straight through the brain. Now, if you stick it too far through, of course, you're going to have to then kind of force a little bit more to get that back off the blade. But it gives you a nice little way to display the figure. I wish more of the figures could come included with body parts just to, if anything, lay around the figure's body. Or in this case, to actually have it sticking, skewered on Baraka's blade. It's a really nice touch, the fact that they would include that. As for the figure's head sculpt, though, I must admit that's a decent-looking rendition of Baraka. Things that Baraka is, of course, known for, not only is just his long arm blades, but the fact that he's also got these rows upon rows of fanged teeth, which has been very nicely sculpted by McFarlane's team. 
I do like the coloring also that they added to the gum line. You can see a little bit of that trickles onto the teeth. I don't think it's so much a paint defect as it is probably the remains of whatever victim he's fought. I do like that additional little bit of red that they've put on top the surface of the teeth. You see what I mean about rows of teeth? There's a few little stragglers along the top area here that have all also been painted here in yellow. I also like the, really the coloring of his eyes. Nice piercing yellow eyes with outlines there done in orange. The few slits that are there for pupils kind of gives you the look that he's reptilian-like. Very, very nice the way that they've done that. For the actual sculpting of the face, let me just get a closer look there showing you guys nice little wrinkles and of course the pointed ears that stick out and jet out from the side of Baraka's face. Generally, the coloring for the figure is this flesh tone. It makes an appearance up at the top all the way down to his waist. I would have maybe added a little bit of a semi-gloss sheen to this because I feel like his skin is a little too dry for my liking. I like my Baraka sweaty, and I think it would have been a nice touch to add just a little semi-gloss, just a clear coat to the surface of the plastic. The paint is actually really good, especially when you've got these spikes happening here on the sides of his arms. But just imagining, if you will, just stop for a second and think. Just a little bit of that semi-gloss sheen coat added not only to his face and the rest of his body. I think really a lot of those details would just pop a little bit more than what they are right now. I like the sculpting also on his torso. Let me just see if I can lift this up so you can see. Despite for the fact that some of it is concealed behind this kind of belt area of his lower half, um, despite that, they've actually sculpted the abdomen all the way down there. I mean, it's a place of, of sculpt that you would completely miss unless you were looking for it like I'm doing right now. But the fact that they would actually sculpt beyond the point of what you would see with your eye is a nice touch of detail on McFarlane's part. Of course, like we've already talked about the spikes, he's got some real great texturing on his overall body. These little small spikes along the top here, which don't really necessarily need to be painted. They're more surface on his skin. We flip that around, he's got a lot more of that also happening along the back area here. There are a few little areas, like veins, for example, that he has on his body, or more scars, I think, scars right there on the side of his body that probably could have used just a little bit of additional paint added to it. But overall, I'm really happy with the color scheme that they used for this. Of course, on the sides of his arms are these wrapped up bandages with a few little spikes that are already sticking their way out, some longer than others. These ones along the back here are a little bit shorter. And it's a pretty seamless look, the way that they bandage this. A nice touch of detail is this one area of bandage. It's actually on both sides, so I don't want to draw too much attention just to the one side, not, almost as if the other side doesn't have it. But the bandages are almost like lifted up. This one right here, you see what I mean? You probably see a little bit more on this side. I like how it's just lifted up slightly, so you would imagine that the bone of the spike sticks a little further and actually grows probably out further here and just is wrapped up by the bandages. It's a nice touch on their part that they lifted the wrapping just enough that it would look like it's been wrapped over more continuous bone that's just underneath that. You just can't see it. That's a nice little touch of detail I like. Speaking of details that I like, I get a good gander at the skull deco that's here on the front. I don't want to say it's necessarily like a sash, but sort of like the top of his pants that he wears. The silver on the skull is a nice touch, as well as some additional silver here on the sides. Uh, the majority of the coloring on this is more brown, but there are still little peaks of burgundy that stick out from the bottom, as well as some nice decent stitch work there on the back of his pants as well. Something else I do want to draw your attention to is Baraka's fingers. The fact that they would actually give painted nails is certainly a nice touch to the figure as well. It just adds a little bit of extra. When the majority of, like I said, the body is this flesh tone. As you move a little bit further down to the bottom of the feet, you can see some rather gnarly looking nails also sticking out there as well. With some additional straps of burgundy used there and a sort of a front foot guard. I like the texturing that they did here, especially here on the toes. Though I'm not a big fan of long toenails, I must admit that does look quite good on Baraka's body here. He has decent coloring where it is. Well, like I said, the majority of the figure is just shirtless anyways. But like, it's where you get the lower half of the body is where they start throwing some extra colors in there. The much needed creamy white, as well as that burgundy, as well as the brown as well as the area of his belt as well. Let me just lift that up so you can see the underpants underneath there. 
The additional stitch work is definitely a nice touch and it adds a little more of that what I was talking about much needed color when again like so much of the body is that flesh tone. Spin the figure around so again you can see all the detailing done to the stitch work. I know we already looked at that already. And again, you've got the wrappings there on the tops of his pants. The only downside, though, is the back of the peg. Uh, if you hinge the knee, of course, it continues the trend of the way it's been wrapped. So I like the fact that on the front, it's that same light white color. The downside, though, is when you look at it from the back of the figure, you're going to see that same coloring of plastic. In a way, I would have hoped that they could have painted at least this part up so that it was a continuation of that flesh color. But unfortunately, they didn't do it, and for most likely the case, you're probably going to be displaying the figure from the front anyways, so you're really not going to see it. All right, let's talk turkey, or at least in this case, the articulation for one, Baraka. His head rotates all the way around as it's sitting on a quite a substantially large ball joint. It does still allow the head to hinge down, and it moves up, and you can also rock the head quite a bit actually left and right, not to mention as well the, the rotation of the head all the way around. Like with other McFarlane releases, he does have that cu cup joint. You see it actually a little bit more here happening with Baraka, specifically on this side right here. It does allow for additional hinge joint, allowing that arm to hinge a little further back than what it normally would just by simply having that ball joint here. In addition to that, of course, the arm does rotate all the way around, no problems whatsoever there. The bice bicep independently rotates, although on this one, it's a little stiff. And unfortunately, when you're applying pressure right here, ouch, 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 you can sort of see how that leaves an impression on my finger. But it does have rotation in the bicep. It's just really stiff on this particular figure. He does have double hinges on the elbows. That's a nice touch. And then he does also have articulation in the hand. Of course, while he does have the spikes sticking out, it is a little bit more difficult to kind of get your hand in there and rotate the hand. And a lot of times, as you are rotating the hand, you sort of see, yeah, see right there, it, it pushes this off to the side. So are you, as you are moving the hand, you just want to be careful not to bend and warp this in the process. Then for his waist, his upper torso is on a ball joint. In addition to that, he's got a secondary ball joint at the base where, again, you can't see it, but it's working behind the scenes, behind his belt area here. As for his legs, his legs split out. I like that this is still kept soft plastic, so it keeps, well, it doesn't restrict the legs from moving out. Especially with these Mortal Kombat figures, you want to have as much posability on these to speak of. So, I mean, again, the idea of having these as softer plastic is a smart move on their part. So you can almost, almost get a splits happening from Baraka. The legs go forward, the legs go back. He has a swivel, basically just at the top cut of the thigh where it's attached to that ball joint. Just again, you can't quite see it. It's in there behind the scenes. He has a double hinge joint on the knee. That's a nice touch. Uh, he does have somewhat somewhat thigh articulation it's actually hidden underneath the pant leg here but he does have a swivel joint happening there uh, and then he doesn't have any articulation from this point down however though when you get to the feet the feet very freely move back and forth you can also rock the feet back and forth this way and of course like other mcfarlane releases he has toe articulation as well Though we don't want to spend too much time discussing it, I just want to show you the texturing that they did on the undersoles of his sandals. Something that you probably wouldn't be seeing anyways, but it's nice touch that they would include that in the first place. Barack is a fine looking figure, basing on a character that I played a lot of when I was growing up in high school. Baraka seemed to be, him and Kun Lao seemed to be the guys I always plucked and picked first. I do think that McFarlane Toys did a bang-up job here on Baraka. Colors are good on this guy. Maybe I would have added a little bit of a sweaty surface of clearer coat on this guy. But short of that, I really think that this one turned out quite nicely. Something I left off in final looks, but a nice touch on McFarlane's part, was to include a brain that you could have skewered on the end of Baraka's blades. This is something I would love to see for future Mortal Kombat releases. Throw in body parts of the victims that they've fought against, the remains of the other fighter. I guess it would be a hard sell, yes, admittingly so, to put this on a retail store shelf and have the kids asking their parents, Mommy, Daddy, why does this figure have limbs and heads of other characters with it? Yes, it would be difficult, but... It's not to say that they couldn't release these figures as bloody store exclusives or maybe online exclusives where you have this figure soaked and covered in blood and why not throw in a couple of arms? Why not throw in a head or an eyeball or something along those lines? 
definitely could get mileage, if anything, out of the existing molds that they already have. Okay, so moving bloody stuff aside, it's a great rendition of Baraka. I like the fact that you can remove the blades, and even though there is that noticeable slot where the blade used to be, more times, nine times out of ten, I'm sure most people are probably going to be displaying Baraka here with the blades already attached. I just like the fact that you can remove it. Display stand is a nice touch, and again, going back to the brain, who doesn't love a brain on the end of someone's spike? Nice job done on, on McFarlane's part. Another great Mortal Kombat release as we had a look at the Baraka Tarkatan Beefcake. <laughs> beefcake. Thank you again to the folks over at McFarlane Toys who provide the sample here of Baraka. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of this figure and overall the Mortal Kombat lineup from McFarlane Toys. Also, if you guys want to see more Mortal Kombat reviews, keep your peepers peeled to this channel because there's definitely going to be a lot more coming your way. But of course, the key to that, if you're new to the channel, is make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. You make sure you turn on that bell notification. And you make sure, of course, you come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when new videos pop up. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.